Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick. And I'm Tom. And this is our big guide to the best carbon plate running shoes in 2022. Right then, carbon shoes, how are we going to do this? So it's tricky this year. It used to be a case if we just talked through all the shoes, because there was only about 10, but now there are way too many shoes. So mm-hmm. really we're only going to be talking about shoes that are currently available and kind of the best on the market. So if you can still find old versions, unless those old versions are really good, we're not going to cover them. And um, we're also going to talk probably more about the big hitters, things like your Alpha Flies, your Adios Pro 3s, and we'll go through some of the more training-focused options or just not as good options, but um, mm. we'll probably spend a little bit less time on them. Yeah, it's still going to be a long one, isn't it? It's still going to be very, very long. It's going to yeah, be a big edit. Good. Don't make any plans. <laughs> and uh, at the end, we're going to have a section entirely dedicated to trail carbon shoes. Mm. There's only three in there because we haven't tested all of them, but that's now big enough to have its own section. Exciting. Very. So we're going to kick off with the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Quite a popular shoe, this is fair to say, Tom. Yes, yeah, there's a few people who like this shoe <laughs> about. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, it's, it's probably the quintessential complex shoe, isn't it? It's it's the one that everyone associates with. If you if you did a family fortunes, <laughs> this is what's going to come up first. <laughs> I would say, if you just want to make, save yourself a lot of time, uh, go and buy the Vaporfly, probably. If you're just looking for your first carbon shoe, it's the yeah. most popular for a reason. It's very lightweight. It's very propulsive. It's great for 5K. It's great for a marathon. It's great for everything. And now it's often in sales. So it's also, yes. yeah, yeah. it's already one of the kind of medium, you know, cheapest carbon shoes at kind of its 210, 225 RRP. But yeah. it's not hard to find this for like 130, 140 quid. Um, and you're guaranteed a good shoe. And then you can find out if that works for you. And from there, maybe go and check out some of the other options. Might yeah. be the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing about the Vaporfly is that even the Vaporfly 1 is very is very similar to the Vaporfly 2. So yeah. where you've got something like the, the Saucony Pro, uh, Endorphin Pros, they're all quite different. Whereas this, you're getting still getting a great shoe whatever you do. So you don't have to know that much about it anyway. It's just you're getting a fantastic carbon plate shoe. Exactly. And, then, and it also, we might as well talk about the build of it because it's what sets the template for all carbon shoes, which is a big midsole stack of soft and springy Piba foam. In this case, it's Nike Zoomex foam, a full length carbon plate, a bit of a scoop to try and kind of roll you forward there. Um, and that's basically the model that every other carbon shoe has followed. Probably don't need to say much more about the shoe. Let's go on and talk about some of the other ones you might know a bit less about. Mm, do it. But it's very good. All right, I've got Kieran here with me now. We're going to talk about the Alpha Fly 2, probably one of the bigger launches of this year in carbon shoes. Certainly a very expensive launch. Uh, Kieran, you weren't a massive fan of the original Alpha Fly, but you do like the 2, is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a massive problem getting the original Alpha Fly on my foot, and I think some of that is still a snug fit for me. I wasn't a huge fan of the way they felt underfoot either with the originals, but having run in the Alpha Fly 2, I've run basically the quickest mile I've ever run. And I, the performance of the shoe, I think, is actually quite remarkable. It was a bit of a, a it kind of astounded me on very tired legs, the, the, the response and the, and the kickback and the return you got from it. And I'm a bit of a convert now. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting shoe. It's, it's a weird shoe. It's a hard shoe to love because it's so expensive. And I'm almost to the point where I, wouldn't, I would certainly wouldn't recommend anyone going out and buying it because you can get such almost equivalently brilliant shoes for half the price. But um, every time I've used it, it kind of convinces me again. Like I've, done, I've gone up to 24 miles in this shoe now in marathon training and I was having a terrible day that day. And it just helped me cling on. I've raced a 10K. I've raced a five mile. ran my five mile PB in the shoe at the end of like a long week of training as part of, you know, just a, it was, the race was almost part of a training block. Um, and it just kind of always delivered like that 10k in the five miles like i was at the end of that race really tired legs and i was going this is going to start feeling really annoyingly big and clunky and it kind of just didn't so i don't know when i don't use it i kind of go off it because it you know i think about it i think oh it's a bit big i'd rather be in the alpha Flow one and that kind of thing and you know the changes made have made it more stable and wider and more accommodating i think so i think more people will enjoy this who maybe didn't like the first one especially it's got rid of some of that high arch pain that there was in the first one but at the same time, I don't want all that extra stability and weight. I'd rather have the lighter Alpha Flow 1. But then I put this on and run in it, and it feels absolutely amazing. So it's, um, I think it's a bit of a hard one. I think if you just look at it and don't ever buy it, you probably won't ever miss it because it is quite a hard shoe to love. But once you use it, it convinces you pretty quickly that it actually is very, very fast despite the weight. And there's no doubt that when you put it on initially, it's like a weird moon boot. It feels very odd. The sensation doesn't feel natural <laughs> in any way. And there are some sort of carbon plate shoes out there that I think... If you prefer a more natural ride, sort of play better to that. But once you get moving in this, I think the changes that they have made with that kind of little bit of extra foam sort of under the under the midfoot there, I think that really helps. I think the stability is better. I think the overall kind of comfort, the wrap of the uppers sort of fits my feet a little bit nicer, even though I do still find them really snug. But for me, it was just that kind of sheer sort of performance. The first time I went out and tested them, I just sort of tried to, I just gave it a go on a kind of mile rep 
hadn't really done any sort of speed training or anything. And I came in about sort of 10 seconds over my fastest ever mile and then did a sort of little bit of a recovery rest lap. And I thought, well, actually, I'll just go and give it another crack and uh, and ran my fastest mile ever. And I think you do kind of notice that. And I, I have now been become a convert. I would always have raced in the Vaporfly 2. But I think now for any kind of road, you know, marathon racing, this is now the shoe that I would probably lace up. I, I would, but when I was first doing a review, I was convinced I was going to use it for Berlin. And over time, I've kind of had my doubts. I've kind of gone back to the Alphaflow 1, which I'm not sure is a better shoe, but I've trusted a bit more because I've used it for my 229 marathon. And But this has got a slightly higher drop, a bit more stable. Uh, my tired legs during training at the moment, I've actually really appreciated that when I have pulled it on for long runs. But I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one to recommend just because it is so expensive. I do think you're getting such great performance from shoes that are much cheaper, but... It's, it's almost like this normalised the original Alphafly. Because remember when the Alphafly came out, everyone's going like, oh, it's too weird, it's too big, I'd much rather have the Vaporfly. And now this has come out and it's even weirder and even bigger. Everyone really loves the first Alphafly because it's like the nimble shoe in comparison. And I wonder if over time the Alphafly 2 will get normalised and people will try it and will enjoy using it. But yeah, I'd say, I don't think it's an essential one to go and buy, but I do think it's actually pretty incredible when you start running fast in it and it will probably surprise you. <laughs> And, I, and there's that, I think you, the thing you mentioned there about kind of on tired legs, that's one of the things I think by comparison to the Vaporfly 2, which would have been my choice before, I actually think the Alphafly 2 is a bit more forgiving when you're not running necessarily with the perfect form. And I think that's something that kind of, if you're going to, you know, if you're chancing it, again, you always talk about you sort of going into a marathon where you're not really sure if you're going to get what you want. And you might find you go into that last six miles where you, you kind of hit the struggle bus. I do feel like the Alphafly 2 probably gives you a little bit more protection and deeper into that when you, you maybe kind of waver off form. Next up, we've got the Nike Alphafly original. Now, the 2 is obviously available now and it's a very good shoe, but it's £275. And the Alphafly 1 is still available quite easily. I bought these myself recently uh, for a lot less than that. And I think there's a fair case of saying this is still a very, very good choice. <laughs> uh, mm. We both got our marathon PBs in this shoe. Isn't that right, Tom? And you actually stopped in that race to repair this shoe. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I think that was a... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's a, a, a not a standard uh, issue with the shoe, but I think with, with the Alpha Fly, I, I think it's a little. We talked about the Vapor Fly. I think the Alpha Fly is a fantastic shoe, but it's a little bit more uh, niche mm. than, than the Vapor Fly. The Vapor Fly seems to apply to everyone, and yeah. everyone who wears it likes it. Whereas the Alpha Fly, some people do have issues with it. Some people don't quite like the feel of it. It's quite. A, a big shoe yeah um so it's got that kind of narrow pinch point around the kind of midfoot and arch which does cause some people a lot of pain in the arch you know you kind of i used to have it very briefly at the start of runs and it went away it lasts a bit longer for you doesn't it yeah so when i did it uh, i had that issue in bilbao at first 5k i could feel it and i was thinking this is this is going to be a major problem yeah it wasn't but i think it's because the pace i was running at in bilbao i was landing quite a lot on my forefoot yeah so i wasn't really feeling a lot in the midfoot i have since been deciding what shoe to wear for Chicago. Mm -hmm. The Alpha Fly is one of them. I put it on the other the other day, and I could feel it in the the, the feel in the arch. Yeah, and it instantly makes me think I can't risk it. <laughs> so this is probably my favourite shoe. It's what I ran my two twenty nine marathon in. I bought these recently to use for my upcoming marathon. Even though I, oh, I probably think the Alpha Fly two might be better, even even though it's a bit heavier, it's got a bit more bounce. But I trust this shoe so much more. The only thing about it is is slightly lower drop than a lot of carbon shoes at four millimeters. I think it feels higher than that to me because of the mm -hmm. way the foams are set up, but. It is a bit lower drop now. It can put a bit more strain on the calves as a result. Main difference from the Vaporfly is obviously the air zoom pod still, but it's generally a weightier, slightly less nimble shoe than the Vaporfly, which pitches this more as a marathon shoe. But even though it's the older version, I think it's one of the top two or three best marathon racing shoes on the market. I got these recently for £100 off eBay. There are good deals out there. So um, yeah, it probably, you know, chips are down, might still be my go-to marathon option. So I don't think you have to upgrade to the new one. Uh, it would certainly be my my thoughts on that mm -hmm. okay next shoe up we have adidas's top of the range carbon plate racing shoe the adios pro 3 it's a lot more expensive than the adios pro 2 it's a lot kind of bigger and bulkier and just generally less attractive i'd say than the adios yeah. pro 2 and it's probably geared much more as a marathon racing shoe it's fair to say tom yeah um i i think this shoe is tricky i've, I've been testing a lot of carbon plate shoes recently i normally have a process for testing that i generally do them over a short distance to begin with so <laughs> At the moment, that tends to be part run. <laughs> Basically, every complex you I get, I do a part run with at the start and then try and beat my PB. Um, with something like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, loved it from the off, really just felt great on that 5K. This didn't feel so good at the 5K. It wasn't until I got to the later distances where I was running for further at a slightly slower pace for efficiency, hmm. um, more at marathon pace, that I really I started to understand what the shoe was for. 
and I think it does deliver nicely for those longer distance ones, maybe over half marathon. Yeah, I agree. I actually similar. I, my first test, and it was like a park run as part of a long session, but um, and I didn't really love it. It didn't feel great at that all out pace. And it, I think also it didn't feel good at the start in general. I think it softens up quite a bit mm. because of the way the plates and that, because it has the energy rods running through the forefoot, which all Adios kind of pros have had. And then a plate at the back. In this shoe, they're connected and it created a very stiff feel at first. And it's still very stiff, but yeah. it has softened up and it's really cushy. And I really enjoyed doing some kind of fairly hard 15 milers in it and that kind of thing. I think it's a really good marathon option. It works quite well. Um, I think some concerns I think I have. I don't think the foam, Adios' foam is quite as good as the foam on the Nike and the Saucony shoes, which I really love, but I still mm-hmm. think this is a great foam. And then the fit on this shoe is a bit weird. Like half size up fits me better and there are some kind of weird things around the forefoot that can scrape your foot, right? Yeah, <laughs> I've, I had. I never had problems with, with shoes. I never, Yeah. <laughs> I, I can pretty much wear any shoe and, and be comfortable in it. But this one, when I started wearing it, for that park run, after I did the park run, I had lo- so much rubbing on the top yeah. of my feet, uh, and it's still I can still feel it a little bit. I've probably done about fifty k in it now, and it's it's okay. I can use the shoe now, but I definitely think there's an odd fit to this shoe that is worth noting if you're looking at picking it up. Yeah, I always think about it is it really makes sense in Adidas's range because of the existence of the Adidas Takumi Scent Eight, which is kind of not a carbon plate shoe, but kind of is not going to have we're not going to get give it its own section, but it's really built as a short distance racer, and it's an amazing short distance racing shoe, the fairly high stack, and it's kind of basically Adidas is really setting you up to use this for five and ten k, and then this for longer events, um, mm-hmm. even though. You know, this is still quite a good short distance racing shoe. They've really made that separation. Whereas in the past, they had the Adios Pro 2, which we're going to come on to, which is a more versatile carbon shoe, I think, than the new Adios Pro 3. The, the 2 was lighter, a bit better at nimble, a kind of shorter events. And this now really is coming in as a cruiser to go up against things like the Alpha Fly mm-hmm. as a marathon shoe. Yep. Right. I'm now joined by Jill. And the first shoe we're going to talk about is the Adios Adios is the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro 2. Just talked about the 3 with Tom, but this is kind of a lighter, nimbler shoe, and you're a bit of a fan of this one, right, Jill? Yeah, I really like it. I think it's got, it feels to me like it's got a really aggressive rocker to it, and really pushes you forward, like from the moment you put it on. The first run I did in it was straight up a hill outside our house, and I'm awful at hills, and it still felt like it was kind of propelling me forwards. Um, It's weirdly, when I re-weighed all of my um, carbon plate shoes, actually not the lightest of the lot, um, it's it's on the heavier end of the spectrum, but again, it, I think it's sort of testament to that real aggressive racing feel that it has, that um, that you don't even notice that it's that heavy. Um, yeah, I think it's you can pick it up for about 120 quid at the moment as well, so it's pretty good value. Um, the only thing is, is I probably wouldn't run a marathon in it. I'd probably only go up to half. I find that I get some foot discomfort sometimes in it, and I just wouldn't risk it. I have done one. And it started to hurt towards the end. I suspect that's to do with those carbon rods that go on metatarsals rather than the full plate. Yeah, I get a bit of discomfort in this as well on longer runs. I've gone up to about 15 miles in it, I'm not, and I probably wouldn't go to a full marathon, but I really enjoyed racing a half in it. I've raced short distances as well. It's a, it's a more aggressive, nimble shoe than the new Pro 3, which is really built like a cruiser of a tank. It's a bit more stable than the new shoe, and it's got a slightly lower drop and more cushion. It's a bit, you know, more comfortable and probably would be great for a full marathon as a result compared to this shoe but this is lighter nimbler touch more aggressive certainly better for shorter races you've got all those kind of cutouts going on which can make it a little bit unstable at times but i didn't really have a problem with that unless i was on like rickety pavements so yeah i think all in all it's a really good option in adas's range and i don't think you necessarily have to go and splash out the big money on the three which is already more on rrp and this is often in sales like you say yeah, and I think that, that continental rubber, like it doesn't look like it's super grippy underneath, for, but it looks really lightweight. But actually, I've never had any issues at all with cornering. Okay, next up, we're going to have what's probably going to be quite a long section on our favourite new yeah, carbon yeah. plate running shoe year this year. This is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Tom, you were such a big fan of the Pro 2, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not. No, uh, the Pro 2, I just, it was far too firm for me, didn't feel enjoyable, didn't feel like a the experience that I'd expect from a carbon plate shoe. I know some people liked it, but I don't think they I don't think it was weighted very heavily and people love that shoe. No. People prefer the speed a lot of the time. Definitely. Um, and then this is basically a revolution. Sockney made so many changes here. They increased the stack height by four millimeters to really give it a much softer, bouncier feel. Yeah. They changed the outsole to be more grippy and they made the upper, you know, this really thin sparkly fishnet very thin but the whole shoe is lighter than the Pro 2 despite being much softer and springier and higher stack and this has gone from being a shoe you didn't like. I like the Pro 2, but this is another level and it's your go-to racing shoe now, right? 
Yeah, so I've I've done five k, ten k. We'll be doing half marathon in it tomorrow, and I will do Chicago marathon in it. So over the course of a month, I'll have done every distance basically up to marathon. Yeah. And I'm I've so far I've done two, and I did a ten mile in it as well. And yeah. ten mile was up another PB. <laughs> um, it's just yeah, I'm just loving it. It's just got everything. It's there's nothing I don't like about this shoe. Yeah, it's. Where I think a lot of other brands have this now, this separation between a lightweight racing shoe like the Vaporfly and then a cruiser like the Alpha Fly. And I think Sockney will do that in the future. There's plans to do that. Right now, this is like a jack of all trades. It's a bit like the Vaporfly in that regard, in that it can do every distance and does them all really well. I've done a really nice park run in it. I was going to use it tomorrow for half marathon as well, but the Puma Fast R mm-hmm. just arrived. So we need to cover that shoe. So I'm going to probably use that. But I adore it. I think it's a great shoe. It's also, I think, like the best daily training shoe on the market. Yeah, yeah, it's you can just do everything in this shoe. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a huge upgrade on the previous one. I think in this case, we're not going to have the Endorphin Pro 2 in this video. You know, it's a fine shoe for short distance races. I like the way it rolls through, but it's a much firmer feel. And this is so much better. I just think it's definitely worth moving on, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I get annoyed that they've called it the Endorphin Pro 3. They should have just called it something else, the Endorphin Ultra 3 or something like that, or yeah. the Ultra 1. Yeah, um, but it is confusing because I've seen people make comments against some of the videos we've done and say, oh, get the 2 because it's cheaper. It's not the same shoe. It's not like <laughs> you get the, the 2 and it's it's a slightly earlier version of this. It's, it's a separate shoe completely. You're going to get a different experience than what you came from this. Yeah, I think the other little thing to mention about that really make really helps the Pro set, stand out in the carbon shoe world is it's got the Piva based foam. Lots of shoes have that. It's got the full length plate, but it's the Speed Roll Rocker they've got in. It's mm-hmm. just one of the best rockers I've had. Well, it won't work for everyone's game, but it works really well for me. You like it as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that just that really well designed rocker helps a lot with making it feel nimble. And I was looking at some stats from a session I did the other day, actually. And my grand contact time is often just less in this shoe just because of the way I mm-hmm. seem to skip along on it. I, I would say as well, the upper, normally with carbon plate shoes, there's a bit of a risk when it comes to the upper. There's always ways to shave off weight when it comes to carbon plate shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and often that might be that the upper is not quite that good. Like the original Vaporfly had a pretty dodgy upper. Yeah. This upper is fantastic. It's so, it holds the foot nicely in place, but it's so light and thin yeah. that it just feels comfortable. And there's plenty of padding around it as well. It's just, it's got everything. It's got everything. Yeah. I don't, don't need anything else. So probably the only negative is a lot of people who wear white socks with this will have them stained pink by that upper. So yeah, yeah. don't run in the rain. <laughs> but I, I don't even like the pink colour anyway. That's, that's... <laughs> All right, I've got Mike with me now, the king of the Metas. Uh, Mike, you're a big fan of the Metaspeed Sky. Uh, ever since the first version, talk us through this carbon shoe, why you like it so much. Yeah. Big fan of the original, and I think with the Sky Plus, you're making improves that do make it a better shoe. I don't think it's massively different from that first one, but I do think it's still a shoe that I've really enjoyed to run fast in. Um, I think particularly for for me, for half marathons and marathons, that's where, and those kind of paces, those are, those are the distances that I've really enjoyed them uh, running in those shoes. I think the first thing for me, first and foremost, is that it's just a really nice, light shoe to run in. I love how thin and light the upper is. Um, Obviously, in the Sky Plus, you're getting uh, more of that midsole foam in there, which, you know, you already had quite an enjoyable, bouncy ride in there. But I think you're getting a little bit more protection now, I think, as well, in terms of kind of running those longer distances. Um, and yeah, that, you know, I've just, I've had a very good experience running in those shoes. It's a shoe that I think you get a nice kind of quick um, kind of feeling running in, the, running in them. Um, and yeah, I'm, although, you know, I'm weighing up whether they're going to be used in, my kind of next race is coming up. I have, you know, there are ones that I've still kind of been used in, using in my training, basically. Yeah, it's great. It's obviously, it's, this is the shoe designed for kind of bounding runners of Asics's two super shoes. It's got the lower drop than the edge, but they've both got the same FF Blast Turbo. It's a nylon foam, a very impressive super foam in there. And even though I am much more of an edge runner in terms of being a high cadence runner, I've always really loved the Sky uh, and the Sky Plus. So actually in both of those, um, in the shoes, I PB'd in my first run of them and the Sky over 10K, which is still my 10K PB. And then in this, I PB'd in the half marathon. And I think you are getting a more cushioned ride in this shoe compared to the edge which is much more kind of tipping you forward with the higher drop and scooped plate and i think this is the slightly more interesting shoe of the pair um it's you know it's just a little bit different to a lot of stuff out there it's got a big kind of bouncy you know protective ride but it's much lighter than similar things like the uh alpha fly or the adios pro 3 so yeah i think it's a really strong option all round and it works very well for races from 5k to the marathon because it is a bit lighter than some of the other big you know 
very cushioned shoes that you see like the Alpha Flight, which seem to be a bit geared more towards the marathon. This is really a versatile one that can be used for races, kind of any distance, really. Yeah, and I think my only real criticism, I think probably a lot of people have maybe experienced, is I think the durability of the outsole, particularly, you know, if you're like a hill striker like me, and, I, you know, I have seen wear, obviously, in the, in the original, and I'm still kind of seeing elements of that in the Sky Plus as well. So I think it's one that you, one that you definitely save for those kind of really important training runs, uh, and also kind of obviously in race day as well. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, that it's definitely one that you need to kind of look after and pick your moments, I think, when you really want to put it to good use. So moving straight on from the Sky Plus to the Asics Edge Plus. Now, in the first generation of this, it was kind of an overlooked shoe. It really was all about the Sky. In the second generation, you know, Asics really beefed up the Edge. It gave it a much higher stack. And the difference really between this and the Sky Plus is that the plate is more scooped. It dives deeper into the, fo deeper into the foam and you've got a higher drop. And as a result, it's designed to kind of improve the efficiency of more shuffly runners who have a high cadence it really supports that style and similar actually to the vaporfly actually it's very similar design to the vaporfly with the eight millimeter drop and that scooping plate now i am a shuffling runner um i think i probably still prefer the sky plus though mike what about you <laughs> yeah i mean i think overall i would still go for the sky plus but actually i've had a much better experience running shorter distances shorter quicker stuff in the edge plus and i don't know if that's maybe the way i'm running kind of in those shorter distances compared to how i'm running in my marathon half kind of um races but i've i found it quite nice and i think you know there's elements that are very similar i think the upper is very similar i think you know obviously you are getting that same midsole foam it's just kind of slightly you know applied slightly differently i would say um and the feeling i still think it, you know when you're running quick in it it does feel like a really nice quick nippy shoe to run in i just think yeah for me it kind of worked a bit better on the kind of shorter stuff but i think overall i think the sky pass has a little bit more to it in terms of versatility and how you can use it and where, where it kind of excels i think um distance and kind of running wise yeah i so i did a workout wearing both shoes kind of back to back and also the edge plus did feel a bit more natural to me with my kind of shuffly running style but i switched to the sky and once i kind of had locked into the way it makes you run that kind of more bouncy stride it provides um, i think i preferred the feel of the sky plus and i certainly didn't feel like it was slowing me down in any way so and the other thing the problem the edge has is that the sky is a fairly you know individual shoe in the world of carbon shoes it really stands out it's right up there with the best of them things like the endorphin pro and the vaporfly and the alpha fly whereas for me, the Edge Plus is very similar to the Vaporfly, but not quite as good. So I did a track workout wearing both of these shoes kind of back to back, and I feel like they've got a similar kind of feeling with that aggressive tippy forward uh, style, but the Vaporfly has better foam in the middle. So I think ZoomX is better than the Asics foam. So if you're looking at a shoe like this, I think for me, the cho clear choice is the Vaporfly. If you're looking at shoes in general, the Metaspeed Sky Plus becomes a little bit more interesting because it has a slightly more, slightly different ride to what's out there, given how light it is as well. Okay, I've got Tom back uh, remotely this time. We're going to talk about the Pirates' favourite carbon shoe, the Fast R. Tom, you've just started using the shoe. I've only had done one in it. What do you think of it? Uh, I've only done one in it. Um, I I like it. I I think it's um, I think it's a good shoe. I just think it's a very specific shoe. So I've been testing a lot of uh, carbon plate shoes out recently. Uh, a lot of them I've tested have been very versatile, stuff like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. This isn't versatile. I, I think well, I went out and did um, a 10K. Uh, half of it was at was a tempo pace, pretty fast. I was at about four minute five kilometers, um, a, a minute kilometers, which for me is like it's fast. Uh, and it felt great at that pace. I really felt like it was turning over nicely. I was landing on the forefoot quite a bit. Just that forefoot feels quite comfortable. Um, but when I slowed down to my marathon pace, a bit slower, I didn't get a lot from it. It just felt a little bit firm and, um, yeah, not very versatile. Fair enough. Yeah, I think I think I don't think it's the most versatile carbon shoe for sure. It does feel a bit awkward. Like I've only done a half marathon race in it, the plushy half. I've got the video up on the channel now, and it's as a heel striker, it's quite an interesting shoe because it's got this firmer chunk of EVA at the back, and it really accelerates your transition onto the forefoot, which is great. And this is the squishy side of the foam. This is much softer. It's got the decoupled plate. So, you know, it's a really interesting shoe from design all round, and it certainly works in terms of pace. Like I cruised through that half marathon. Well, not cruised. I was working pretty hard, but I was running it more towards marathon pace rather than all out half marathon effort but it felt pretty comfortable the turnover was really good in the shoe I, I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable option i don't know if i'd go to a full marathon in it but yeah i really liked using it and it's a very interesting shoe for me all, almost the problem is that puma already had the deviate nitro elite which i think is possibly just as good made better it's lighter it's cheaper it just was around has been around for a while but wasn't really available so it feels like they almost moved straight onto an upgrade that that maybe isn't a huge upgrade so I think if I was checking out any Puma Carbon shoe, I'd probably start with the DV8 Nitro Elite, but obviously you've only done one run a piece in this shoe. We'll do some more testing and get back on our full review, but 
it's certainly an interesting one um, and it, it works despite all the strange elements to it but yeah I don't think it's that versatile you're right on that front yeah I think I think after a few more runs I'm going to find out what it's for next up we've got the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite which is an absolutely great carbon plate running shoe that no one got to run in because they had massive stock issues when it first launched <laughs> and by the time they kind of got the stock out there Puma was already talking about its new carbon shoes and same time it's £170 it's fairly cheap it's 36 millimeters listed, but it feels a bit lower than that. I think this is a brilliant car plate running shoe that more people should try, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've you got it this year, Tom, right? And you enjoyed using it. Yeah, I, I just sort of turned up and I completely forgotten about it. Um, <laughs> I think I, I used it for a few, a couple of track sessions and some sort of interval sessions and really liked it for those. It's a very, it, I think it's a very nippy shoe. It's, 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 it feels very light, feels like you can really just as soon as you want to go just set off and go in it and, yeah. and really go fast i don't think it has the protection that i'd want from something for like a marathon distance or anything like that but i definitely 5k 10k interval sessions stuff like that i think it's fantastic yeah i would say it's got a piba based midsole foam this nitro elite foam which puma uses on some more of its shoes now um it's actually the lightest carbon plate running shoe on the market it's under 200 grams even oh. in my size like the vaporfly is just a few grams heavier the vaporfly too uh, and i thought it wasn't gonna be protective enough but i did use it in a spell of marathon training where over the course of four days i did like a 27k session in this shoe with two kind of hard 5ks in there then I did my sunday long run in a different shoe then i raced the 5k in it on the monday went sub 16 very pleased mm. <laughs> giving that back load and then uh, on the tuesday i did like 10 1k reps um at the track and my legs felt pretty good it was all in this shoe so it is it's more protective than you think but definitely has a more grounded feel than uh, lots of the other shoes and maybe it's more people lightweights like molly seidel who can run it for a marathon but yeah i think it's a great five to half marathon racer it's a little bit cheaper the problem it probably has is that the vaporfly is available for less and it's still a better shoe this is a piva based foam but nike's foam i think is still a bit more bouncy and impressive but this is a great option that i'm hoping more people will have a chance to try now because it is now available and if puma is one of those brands as well where they do not discriminate with their like discount codes <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. when you see discount codes on puma it will include this so you might be able to get it for a real really good price sometime whereas yeah a lot of the brands like nike to my much to my chagrin nearly always manage to exclude the oh, outside yeah, from yeah. discount <laughs> Uh, next up we have one of the older kind of super shoes still in existence in that the three is about to land but the rc elite 2 is still very much worth considering it's like the most comfortable carbon shoe i've ever come across um and you can pick it up for a bargain price right can't you jill yeah i think about 145 quid you can get it for maybe even less um i think it's a great shoe you can step in it straight away if you've never worn a carbon shoe you'll be perfectly happy in it it's super stable it's very comfortable it's got a great wide toe box I know some people have said that that fuel cell midsole is um, almost too cushy and they don't get enough off it, but I haven't found that. I feel like it has a really good return on it. Um, the collar and the fit and the lacing are all just designed for ease. It's a racing shoe, but it's designed to make your life as easy as possible. There's none of this like awkward lacing system or anything like that. Um, yeah, I think if you're ever dithering about what shoe or you've had any kind of injury or anything like that, like this is probably the one to take for you. Um, and it's actually pretty light as well, given how cushioned it is, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really lightweight. And given, again, yeah, given the massive stack, it's, it's, it is really comfortable. It doesn't really give you any ground feel. I think sometimes that can almost trick you into thinking it's not that fast, not that aggressive. But I've run, you know, a really good half marathon race in the shoe. It'd be a great option. I've done lots of very long marathon training runs going up to about 24 miles in it. And it's, but you can also just do like 1k pickups or go down the track and i've been in the track in it as well and it's really fast you just don't feel the speed so much and some people don't like that but actually a lot of people will like that for a full marathon in particular and it doubles up well as a great daily trainer as a result of being so comfortable like there's a little bit of wobble there but it's not too bad so i think it's a really versatile carbon shoe a very friendly one very approachable one um and that's uh, that's made even more the case if you are picking it up for a lot less than it's like you know 210 pound rrp well, next up, we have one of two shoes we're covering in this video from New Balance's new Super Comp range. Um, the, F, the Elite is not out yet, so we won't be covering that shoe, but we are going to talk first about the Super Comp Pacer, which is the short distance, relatively low stack racing shoe that we both kind of like, but a bit firm, isn't it? It's fair to say. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing about this shoe is it's fine. We've, we've done tracking it, and, and, and I, I can't remember if I've raced in it. I don't think I've raced in it, so I think I've done a few track sessions in it. I think the problem for me is that I don't really feel like you the fact that it's got a plate really benefits it in any way. I've got shoes that are 
low stack that I'd probably use instead of it. Yeah. I'd done a race in it, like an eight, a 10K race on mixed terrain. It was quite good for that because sometimes with full carbon shoes, you go onto like a little bit of gravelly stuff. You're not getting the benefit of the plate and they get a bit unstable. But and then this gives you a little bit of punch when you hit like the runnable bits when the carbon comes into its own, but not nearly as much. And I think if you're looking at low stack shoes, the Takumi Sen 8 is a lot better than the shoe. I think it's just a bit more exciting and it's not that low. So it's mm-hmm. not like it's track legal or anything like that. It's um, It gives you a bit more of a racing flat style feel, but you mm-hmm. are losing a lot of performance um, compared to full complex. Yeah. And, and when you get into the realms of, of this sort of shoe, you've got to get a lot of different shoes yeah. because you're not going to buy this and then go, well, that's my race shoe because you're going to need this and you're probably going to need you know your long distance marathon one. So yeah, it's just a very niche shoe that might work for some people, but it's a bit of an investment if... You know. Yeah, I'd say if you are chasing that more grounded, firmer, uh, calm, like super shoe feel, I think so. Actually, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite is quite a good option in that area, or the Takumi Sen. Mm-hmm. So another shoe, a really interesting shoe from New Balance the Super Comp range is the Trainer, which has an illegally high stack in the vein of the Adidas Prime X, a shoe we haven't covered in this video. We've never tested. We apologise for that, but yeah, these shoes that basically have stacks over forty millimeters in limits, they're built just for giving you an absurd feeling in training of you know huge bounce and a carbon plate but not for racing so this has got a massive stack of fuel cell phone very soft very springy full length carbon plate loads of measures like that big cutout to try and make it stable despite that stack height and it's interesting it's quite fun to run in it's fair to say tom (laughs) i've actually worn to this shoe quite a lot when i first started wearing it as soon as i took it out of the box i I love a cushion tunic (laughs) everyone knows i love a cushion shoe took this out of the box and i was thinking here it is this is the one this is (laughs) this is me sorted for the next year um, and I did, I think for the first 10K or so when I was running it, I really enjoyed it. I could feel that play. It felt really soft and bouncy, but it's also quite a clunky shoe. It's quite a mm. heavy shoe. So even though you get that enjoyment initially, you start getting into the later kilometers and you're going, I, I wish it was, I just had a lighter shoe on, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, I think I still think it's fun. I just think uh, if I'm going out for like a 15K run, marathon pace run, maybe it's base pace, I think it's great, but... It's, got, it's limited in terms of the benefits. Yeah, it's definitely a bit big for my take. I, again, loved it first run. I do think that kind of base training run of around an hour, pretty easy, great. But, mm-hmm. you know, loads of shoes are good for that run. And this costs mm-hmm. over 200 pounds. And I thought it would be amazing for a long run. Took it out for a 20 miler and it just started to weigh me down and yeah. feel a bit too much. And it is pretty, it is stable for its size. Mm-hmm. But if you are, you are constantly thinking about where your foot's going, positioning a foot, anything on the track coming up that could destabilise you because it is so high. Oh, I had a, I had a few dodgy <laughs> moments where I wasn't looking where I was going and I hit something. Yeah, I checked my WhatsApp while wearing it. Anyway, that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, that's, fair, that but. is your fault, yeah. <laughs> So in the end, it ends up, yeah, like I say, a bit niche. Like if in this kind of training partner shoe world, the Endorphin Speed is just a better shoe of a nylon plate. I think the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 is just a more versatile shoe because this isn't that fast. Took it to the track and it's mm. just a bit too big then. It, it's crazy bouncy and it never bottoms out. But it's just a bit big, and I think it doesn't have that many uses for me in what I would use it in my normal running routine. All right, next we'll talk about the uh, the Kip Run KD 900X. Mm. This is the Decathlon uh, carbon plate shoe. Very exciting shoe. It's just come out. I've only done a couple of runs in it, um, and so far we're going to give fairly limited thoughts and talk about what the shoe is. But basically, what Decathlon's gone for is value: 130 pounds, 150 euros, very cheap, and durability. They keep pitching it as a shoe that's going to last a thousand kilometers. Now, it's got a PVAX midsole. And it's got a full length carbon plate. Um, it's got a pretty decent outsole and a lightweight upper, a lot of good ingredients. It doesn't weigh too much either. It's around kind of 250 grams, but the ride is a lot firmer than most carbon shoes. And that's almost part of uh, its design. The idea is that ride will mean it's much more durable. Um, it isn't harsh. I, like I've used it for a couple of runs now, like one kind of around 10 mile run. I used it for the first seven mile reps of a 10 times one mile rep session. And it felt very fast, comfortable, but it is still firmer a shoe I'd look as a short distance shoe for now, but it might break in a bit. But at the moment, I think where I'd say this shoe is worth considering is as it could be one of the best kind of plated training shoes going. Because at 130 pounds, it's delivering a good level of performance, a really high level of performance, a firmer, more stable feel than most carbon shoes. Uh, and it's quick and it's durable and it's pretty cheap. And at the moment in my marathon training, I'm going off some of the softer shoes a little bit because my legs are just not stable. I'm tired and having a firmer feel in that mile session really was appreciated because I just wanted to know where the ground was under my feet a bit. So what carbon <laughs> shoe would you compare it to that exists? Uh, I would say it's probably more comparable to something like the Endorphin Speed for me, okay. actually. And I think if you want a slightly cheaper, firmer, more stable Endorphin Speed, it's a similar weight, it's slightly heavier, I think, maybe. But again, probably should last a bit longer. I think that's where I'd be pitching it at the moment. 
Um, I think if you're looking again as like kind of a newcomer to carbon shoes, it might not be the one to actually go for because it is quite, you might feel a bit too harsh and it's, you know, it's not got that super soft feeling that a lot of these shoes do have. But a really cool shoe. We'll give our full thoughts in the full review coming. But at the moment, this is just after a couple of runs. Okay, next up, shoe that I think only I've tested right, Tom, which is the Salomon Phantasm CF. I remember you testing it well, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I ran a marathon that didn't happen in it. So I got <laughs> DQ'd for, going the, for missing a timing point, which I did not miss because I wasn't even racing this marathon. Jury's still out on that one, mate. <laughs> wasn't even going for a PB or anything, but yeah, got <laughs> the worst organised marathon of all time, Bill Bow. But this is kind of Salomon's next... First, uh, basically they had the Salomon Phantasm, which had a kind of big rocker, wasn't really uh, built as a long distance racing shoe, wasn't really plated. This has got you know a carbon fiber plate in here. Um, you've got a big stack of their Olefin foam, which is firmer than many, but it's pretty comfortable and the shoe has a really, really good rocker on it, really pronounced rocker. Uh, and I loved running the marathon in it. I kind of did it, I only had the shoe a few days and it, because it wasn't going all out and I was running still hard, uh, it did a really good job. And I've done like track sessions in this shoe and I, I think it's fantastic training shoe that you can race in it's more for me it is more in that kind of endorphin speed realm but it, again problem here with all salmon products actually is their price is very high and sometimes they're the market leader in their field and certainly in some kind of trail running and that because mm -hmm. they can charge a little bit more but complex shoes i don't think they basically have the the, the clout to go in and price themselves as you know the same yeah. price because yeah. the shoes haven't delivered yet on that level but i think an underrated shoe as a result because no one got to test it <laughs> but yeah it's not one i think uh, a good one if you like red. Yeah, if you like red, it's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it, it really is a good shoe. I think that will log a lot of miles and be durable and is comfortable to use for lots of running. Really good rocker. It can do easy runs in it as well, but doesn't have the top level performance. Uh, so it probably wouldn't be something I'd go for because you could just go and buy one of the top shoes like the, the Saucony or the Adidas or the Nike and then get yourself a cheaper training partner shoe. All right, next up, we've got Hocker's, I guess, top carbon racing shoe. The fruit salad shoe, as Mike calls it, because of the colorway we uh, tested out. Um, it's the Hocker Carbon X3. Kieran, quickly, what do you think of this shoe? <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm just not convinced by it. I mean, it's a fine shoe. <laughs> it's an okay shoe. It does a reasonable job. I, I can't really think about where to place it in the lineup. I, to me, it feels like more like a carbon training shoe than a carbon racing shoe. To me, it doesn't really have the response that you'll find from things like the Alpha Fly, from the Vapor Fly. It doesn't feel as light and as nimble. It's a, it's a little bit too much shoe. Uh, and it, yeah, for that reason, I'm not really sure where to place it. I, I kind of don't mind it for going out and doing kind of longer training runs, but it wouldn't, it doesn't go into that kind of racing area that I think a lot of the other shoes do. No, I completely agree. Yeah, it's got a nice smooth ride. It's a really nice long run shoe, like you say, but you know, those are you know, 10 a penny and you certainly get them for a lot less than you know, the price of the Hocker Carbon X3. Don't really think Hocker's nailed it, just purely based on their foams. Their foams just aren't as soft and responsive as a lot of the best ones out there. This is a nice shoe, I enjoyed running in it. I think it's very similar actually to the Reebok Float Ride Energy X, which is a cheaper carbon shoe in it. And that's big boat-like shape, quite smooth, good for rolling along on you know fairly long, steady runs maybe, but I probably wouldn't race any kind of distance in the shoe. They haven't made it better than the Carbon X1 in my book. I mean, the Carbon X1 was light and nimble, <laughs> it was agile, it was a shoe that was kind of almost pitched at going kind of longer, ultra flat kind of road racing. And this one just feels like more mm. and I don't think they've improved it. Next up, we have another one of Hocker's Carbon Shoes. This is the cheaper model within the range, but actually I think the much better Carbon Shoe in Hocker's range. It's the Hoka Rocket X. Jill, you've run a pair of these into the ground or two of them even in fact. So. Two of them, yeah. I got sent the first pair. Um, they arrived the day after I'd run um, one second, no, two seconds off marathon PB. Shouldn't have really been running, was too excited, wanted to try them and still ran ridiculously fast in them, given that my legs ought to have been trashed. Um, wore through those, bought myself a new pair, and then realised the other day when my foot started feeling slightly funny in them, which is really unusual, that I'd actually reached the carbon plate. Um, that said, I know people have some concerns about, in general, about hookers, um, hookers out, like the, the soles of them not being very durable. Um, I haven't found that to be an issue. I've run, I ran well over 500 miles in that shoe before there were any issues at all occasionally you get like a stone lodged in it but um i think that's pretty good for a shoe that you can pick up for 80 quid at the moment if you look at the right place the downside of the shoe in some ways is that it is so approachable and um, it's probably closest to something like the new balance fuel cell rc elite because it is so approachable anyone can run in it um but it just doesn't have that sparkle of fairy dust that you kind of almost want from a race shoe to put it on these days and feel slightly odd almost to kind of get you in that race mode. Um, if that's not something you're looking for, then absolutely get the Hocker. Um, 
again, you can train in it. I've done tempo runs. I've done mile reps. I've done even shorter than that. And it's absolutely fine. It's got, it's got enough return. Not, I don't think as, as much return as something like the New Balance. Um, but it is really good. I've done massive long. I did all my marathon long runs in it in the last um, cycle. Yeah, I think it's great. I think I probably, in my mind, it definitely fits more as a very, very good trainer. Like it's really good for doing lots of different runs. It's got quite a natural feel to compare to, like you say, the more bizarre super shoes. It's got a really nice rocker. I think it's more than comfortable enough to do long runs in, which is why I think it's better than the Carbon X3, which is just a heavier, not very good shoe. And the Rocket X actually does have a niche in today's market. I think it's comparable to things like the Endorphin Speed as a very good plated training option that you can race in and race well in if you want to. But yeah, maybe just have the sparkle of those top super shoes, like you say. Next up, we've got a slightly different shoe to the rest on this list. This is the Skechers Go Run Speed Elite Hyper. Or it's, it's all those words in some combination anyway. Uh, and this is a much lower stack shoe to the rest on these lists. It's got kind of a carbon winglet plate in there, but the stack is actually under 25 millimeters. So it makes this a legal rate shoe for track races over 800 meters, which is why I think it's worth including, because this is the shoe I use when I am racing on the track, uh, like things like 3,000 meters, 5,000 meters, and I want something more protective than a full racing flat or a spike so it does have a very interesting role i think in the carbon plate world despite being an older shoe mike yeah no i mean i really enjoy running in the shoe i think for a very specific distance i think 5k and 10k i wouldn't probably want to go further than that in it but the runs that i have done that kind of shorter stuff and also i really enjoyed doing my track sessions in it as well and it just feels it comes alive i think and it's a very excitable ride that you get in this shoe um and that's a reason that i've gone back and wanted to use it and again yeah it's one that i've i found really good to use for track sessions kind of interval sessions that, that's where i've kind of grabbed it again it's an it's a shoe that's very light there's very little to it in terms of that upper but i quite like the fact that you get that there and on the outside i think it's really strong as well particularly i think on roads i think you know i've i found it very kind of good in terms of the traction and grip that i've got but yeah it's a bit of a surprise one and probably not one that everyone's heard of but i think in terms of being a shoe that you can run the kind of shorter kind of quicker stuff and rely on something like that um it's a really kind of standout shoe i think yeah definitely and it's got a really lightweight pickup it's a really nice fun shoe to run short reps in if you're looking for more kind of a, an old school racing flat style feeling this provides it much more realistically than things like the takumi sen which is a really a, pretty much just a full super shoe so it's not going to be as efficient and leg and save your legs in the same way that the high stack shoes do but a lot of fun to use. And if you can pick it up for a bargain, you've got yourself a great track shoe. Next up, we have a shoe that I was very excited about when it, when it launched, and I'm now a bit less excited about. This is the Reebok. You were very excited when this <laughs> The Reebok Floatride Energy X. This just has a four foot carbon plate, but it's got the Floatride foam. So I love the Reebok Floatride Energy 4. I think it's the best budget training shoe on the market. It's 75 quid, nearly always reduced, and it's lightweight, feels nice, it's comfortable, you can use it for a good range of training. Hoping Reebok would deliver similar value here. This is 130 pounds, but Basically, what you get is a, a okay training shoe. It's it's too heavy. It's not really propulsive. This foam, which works well on like a cheap daily trainer, just doesn't really work as a super shoe kind of vibe. And they're pitching this more as a long distance shoe. But I would say if you're thinking, oh, maybe it's more accessible. It's you know, it's better, more designed for someone like me. Maybe I, I don't want to get into like the big carbon plate shoes, all that kind of thing. Kind of is, but at the same time, I think you're getting this, getting a similar level of performance just from normal shoes. Like the common plate in here just isn't really adding much. It's mm -hmm. big boat. Like it's very much like the Hocker Carbon X3. I'd say if you're going to buy the Hocker Carbon X3, don't buy this. It's cheaper and it's very similar, but neither <laughs> okay. are that good. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't go for it. I would get the Reebok Flutter Energy Four instead. All right. From now on, we are talking trail carbon shoes. Uh, and the first one that we're going to talk about is the Hoka Texan X. Very exciting shoe with twin carbon plates that run kind of in parallel down the, down the shoe. So basically, a full carbon plate on the trails can sometimes be a bit uneven, too stiff. And if you hit like rutted ground, it can jank your foot all over the place, basically. So finding a really good carbon shoe for the trails is tricky. They're not going to offer the same kind of performance, you know, benefits, I think, as you get on the road. But the Tecton X is one of the best ones I've tested, I think, because it is pretty light and nimble, but you do get a little bit of that propulsion from the plates at times. Do you think, Kieran? Yeah, I really enjoyed this shoe. I actually did it in a test where I went out and ran with kind of four kind of road to trail shoes over, a, I think it was like a marathon distance. And I went from the Speed Goat 5s into the Tecton X. And you can really, I think you can feel the difference in the kind of punch that you get from the Tecton X. I was running on kind of quite sort of well-groomed sort of fairly sort of flat rolling trails and rather than anything steep but i thought they had pretty good kind of stability i think you you definitely felt the extra kind of punch from those carbon plates and the foam working together i thought they were a really kind of lively fun shoe and i would definitely think about racing um those kind of 
sort of, I guess, less kind of steep trail ultras in this shoe. It was it was a shoe that I really enjoyed. I think it's actually a brilliant partner to the Speed Goat Five as well. It's obviously more expensive, and there's a question about whether or not those you really need both of those shoes. You probably get away with one or the other. But um, if you wanted a training shoe and then something to feel a bit more racy, then I think the Tech the fits that bill. Yeah, what I quite like about it is when I, when I want to run on mixed terrain, like on bits in the forest where it was a bit steeper or looser or like muddy single track, it felt just like you weren't getting the plate benefit, but it felt light and it was fine. You know, it was still like you know, a quite light shoe. And then when you do hit more runnable trails, you then start to get those benefits punching through from the plate. Really enjoyed it going up hills. Weirdly, I was seen, always seem to run up hills quicker in the shoe. Um, I think it, the only problem I'd say potentially with it is is that the outsole is really geared towards pretty tame trails uh, for me. And I think maybe the the Socony's carbon plate shoe, which I think isn't quite as nimble as this because it has a full plate, but uh, it has a better outsole, I think, for slightly muddier ground when maybe you probably wouldn't want a carbon shoe on anyway because if you're on really soft ground, then you're not really going to get the pushback from the foam you're looking for. But um, yeah, I did. I really like looking at it. Well, canal towpath, I think, is almost perfect for the shoe. I really ran some fast sections on a, uh, on a canal towpath in this shoe because it does have that extra punch and the grip is perfectly good on that kind of terrain. Yeah, and I think if, you, if you're doing that kind of crossover where you're going to go from tarmac to trail or you're going to hit sections where there's going to be tarmac, it also, like I said, I think it performs really nicely on kind of road or paved sections as well if there's little bits of those. The only, I had one other issue with the durability is I think the eyelets in the lacing, they don't feel particularly sort of strong. I, I, my, my worry is that over time those might break. They're, They've done something sort of slightly weird with them, and that was a big kind of durability concern for me. But well, another new trail running carbon plate shoe that came out this year was the Socony Endorphin Edge, which basically aimed to deliver some of the key ingredients of the Pro and Speed Road shoes to the trail. So you've got a Power Run PB midsole, PB midsole. You've got a, I think it's a Carbotex carbon plate, so it's Carbotex. not full carbon, yeah. a bit more kind of um, mm -hmm. flexible. And you've got the Speed Roll technology. Uh, Tom, does it deliver in the same way as the Pro on the trails? <laughs> uh, I think it delivers more like the Speed. Right. Um, I think it's definitely sort of it has the feel of the speed it's a bit more rigid and you can kind of feel that carbon, carbon plate or carb, carbotex carbotex it's still carbon it's carbon fiber carbon it? yeah <laughs> you can kind of feel that plate in it um, what I do feel is that it's 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 a good shoe for efficiency gains especially over sort of harder trails where you're more on that road type stuff um, I do I, I when I run on trails especially when I'm, it's tricky terrain I want a little bit more flexibility in the, the foot. I want to feel yeah. the road a bit more, feel the rocks and stuff. It just feels like it's it's a good road to trail shoe or maybe like hard, compacted trails for me. Yeah. I think it's got a slightly better outsole than the Texan X, the other big kind of trail running shoe this year, the Hoka, um, which this is, I think, does a slightly better job on sloppy ground than that shoe, which really does excel only on hard ground. But I think it's almost, it's almost slightly less nimble than that shoe. Like it's got a nice, there is a full plate in there still. And sometimes on rutted ground, I could feel the shoe dragging me, my foot a little bit out of three position. quarter lengths uh yeah sorry yeah it is yeah, recorded yeah um uh, but it's uh it's not because the hocker has those two parallel plates uh, and this yes, is yes yeah, it's, yeah. it's a across the width of the shoe yeah. um so yeah i think it's really shoe. I, I think it's probably my favorite carbon plate trail running shoe but i've said this many times and i stammer i i still wouldn't buy a carbon plate running shoe for the trails so i prefer just a lightweight racing shoe if on the trails for short distances and over longer distances probably something like the speed go i think would give yeah I, th I think i think carbon plate races generally have a there's a certain type of person who lives in a certain type of place in the world <laughs> where they would be very valuable, where you've yeah. got sort of long distance, um, hard, compact trails. Yeah. You need extra grip where your road shoes just aren't giving you the durability and stuff that you need from from from, from those trails. That's where these come in nicely. You live in the UK, <laughs> you know, th there's a limited use for these because as soon as you start hitting soft muddy wet ground, you sort of lose any that value from these. And I've had that the same with any carbon plate trail shoe that I've used. It just loses its value once you hit certain certain terrains. Next up we have, I think the first carbon trail shoe any of us tested, which is the North Face Flight Effective. Now I did one long run in this shoe and I did quite enjoy it, but I basically haven't been able to use it very much. I've got some, just a really strange problem with the upper where it digs into almost the top of my foot in a weird way, in an uncomfortable way. And so I haven't really used it much, but Kieran, you have, you've run an ultra in this shoe and done other stuff in it. So tell us what you think of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I ran a, a 60K ultra, which was again, it was a bit of a mixed kind of trail, very sort of light, very sort of, um, I guess, groomed and fairly, fairly flat but a bit rolling bits of tarmac thrown in and a shoe that I think you know this shoe really fits that kind of run really well I really enjoyed it I, I really enjoyed the fact that you've got a decent stability out of it I think compared to some other shoes that you might go into some of the innovates where you get kind of firmer base 
uh, on this kind of shoe there's a little bit more softness which I think kind of soaked up some of the lumps and bumps better but without kind of compromising too much stability overall. I found them that the, the uppers and stuff had a really kind of snug fit I didn't have too much kind of sliding and slipping but also they were to me they felt sort of slightly longer in the toe box there was a bit more kind of room sort of on the lengthwise which meant in, in a race where you're going to be hammering kind of down some steeper bits you're not getting the risk of that kind of toes jutting up against the um the end of the, the shoe which i think you know everyone who comes off these races with black toenails that's a really big kind of positive from the, the vective I, I thought they were kind of punchy i thought they were kind of light i think they're they're pretty um nimble and agile and i enjoyed them my only main problem is and I, as i say this all the time i've got big fat feet when i got to the end of doing the 60ks i had to have someone else help me get them out because they've got the booty fit and it's quite tight and my legs were sort of in bits that, you know, after after that distance, you've got kind of tenderized feet and toes and I was sort of cramping up all over the shop. So I, I struggled to get them off. But so if you've got kind of bigger feet, maybe that you want to think about the sizing on that. But overall, I think these are a good shoe and I think they've got good versatility. Caveat, didn't test them on big kind of steep downhills, but I think they've got kind of, the, you know, the lugs are, are fairly shallow. So I don't, again, I don't know how they'll cope in sort of muddier or, or steeper, more sort of tricky, slippy conditions. They're not good in the mud. I can tell you that from my run in them. Um, they, that was my favorite. They got this lovely rocker and that kind of quite, you know, shallow outsole. They almost feel like a road to trail shoe and they do get that rocker going on good terrain, but unlike any muddy sections I did in the kind of long, the two runs I did in them, it did get a bit kind of slick. <laughs> That's it guys, that is our massive carbon plate roundup. Uh, I hope it was useful. If you have any questions on the shoes that we've mentioned, we'll try and get to them below. We, you know, or get to them on the podcast. We often do... Let's do it on the podcast. Let's do a carbon plate section on the podcast. If you've got any questions, we'll do it on the podcast. Perfect. Uh, and if you have questions about why we haven't included a shoe, oh, either we don't have it, uh, like the New Balance, new or New Balance hasn't come out yet. And some of the shoes, we haven't been able to get hold of the Skechers, um, Freak, Speed Freak um some of the other smaller brands we have to get hold of or we just have tried them we just don't think they're worth talking about but we can tell you which of the cases it is if we are if you ask about a specific shoe we haven't mentioned here but there's definitely enough there for you to cover i mean we're a, must be about 45 minutes at this stage so <laughs> you can understand why we needed to leave we're some presuming things up. you're looking for a calm plate shoe at this point <laughs> anyway have a good one listen to the podcast do listen to the podcast